AAC home and homes. Now we're going to talk about why it makes sense for some teams to do it and why it doesn't make sense for others. I haven't commented a ton on this. I initially was talking about how UCF should accept these two for ones, right? I'm no longer standing on that. I think that teams like Memphis and UCF who are scheduling these, Memphis just signed on uh, a two for one with Arkansas. Now they're doing the one for one 2025. They're playing at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. 2026, they're playing in Fayetteville. 2028, they're playing in Fayetteville again, and Memphis is getting uh, over a million dollars for that game. It's basically a bye game. It makes sense for Memphis. It doesn't make sense for teams like UCF, right? Uh, USF, South Florida, they've got home and homes, with two for ones, with Alabama, Florida, and Miami all scheduled. Now, the reason that it makes sense for them to do the two for ones they're not worried about uh, making sure that their schedule is tough enough. They're also not out there spouting off a bunch of crap about how they could beat you know, Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, whatever, like UCF is. But those teams, Memphis and USF, they do not have an on-campus stadium. Their stadiums that they play in are owned by the cities in which they are located. So game days are not nearly as profitable for them. UCF, they make anywhere from 3 to $4 million every game day. And it, not to mention the fact that UCF, you're not going to get the Blue Bloods. They understand that, but they've done a pretty good job with scheduling. If you look at what UCF has done, 2019 they've got Stanford coming in. They also play at Pitt. 2020 they play North Carolina at home. They play at Georgia Tech. 2021, they've got at Louisville, but they're still working on 2021. 2022, they've got Louisville and Georgia Tech coming in. 2025, they've got North Carolina coming in. These are money makers. They have their own on-campus stadium. They make all of the money from concessions, from parking, from ticket sales, everything else. They make all the money. With Memphis and South Florida, it's not the same. South Florida plays at Raymond James Stadium. That is the Tampa Bay Bucks Stadium. Memphis plays in the Liberty Bowl, which is run by the city. That money is split. So that kind of stuff doesn't work for Central Florida the same way it would work for Memphis and South Florida, where those teams, they'll do their home and home, but then they'll have the extra game, which is the bye game, where Alabama, Florida, Miami, whoever is going to pay South Florida a million bucks, which goes a long way considering they make about $7 million from their TV deals. Right, the SEC last year, their TV deal got forty-three million, I believe. It was the second of all power conferences. So, where they're making all that money and they need a game, they need a good game at home. It makes sense to buy a game against Memphis or South Florida or Temple or whoever. Right, those kind of games, it makes sense, and it makes sense for teams like Memphis, whoever that need the financial boost that another home game would not give them. Right. So that, that makes a ton of sense. Um, just wanted to kind of hit on it. We haven't talked about it, although it's been a big topic for about two, three weeks now. Wanted to let you guys know how I'm feeling on that one.